on any femoral traction system, you're going to need some kind of splint, something rigid like a paddle. But I'm not a paddler, you might say. So if you're a skier, you'd have ski poles. But my ski poles aren't long enough. Well, you can duct tape them together. You could use a couple ice axes. You could use just poles from the forest. So there's usually something that you can kludge together to make some kind of splint. Since we're on a river trip today, we're just going to use this rafting paddle. The other thing you'll need is some kind of material for improvising the ankle hitch. There are a lot of ways to do this, a lot of techniques. I like using webbing. And in a moment, we'll show you how to tie a knot and how to put that on. Another thing I like to use is a carabiner. You might say, I don't have a carabiner. And I would say, you don't need one. So why am I using a carabiner? Because I think it looks cool. The other thing I like to bring along is something to apply traction. In this case, it's a little Fastex buckle. And an obvious thing would be, well, I don't have one of those. It's hard to find a pack that doesn't have a bunch of Fastex buckles on it, so there's usually something that you can improvise. You could do this just with a piece of cord, and I'll show you how to do that in a bit. Uh, and belts, you know, I've got a Fastex buckle on my pants today, and I didn't put these on for Medwell. I was wearing this belt today, and usually somebody's got some kind of a buckle system. Now there's another way to do it using a Spanish windlass. It's not my preference. I like to use just some kind of a Fastex buckle on some flat webbing. You might have a six inch ace like this. You don't need this, but at the end you'll see that this tucks the whole system away a little bit more neatly. And uh, lastly, what are we missing in this system? The one item we need every time we do anything, and that is duct tape. And something that always makes me laugh, and I've talked about this in other episodes, is people say, you know, oh, it's great, you have duct tape, but I'm not going to have duct tape in the wilderness. And I would say, really? Here's duct tape on a water bottle. You can put duct tape around a kayak paddle. You can put duct tape everywhere, and you should have access to duct tape. It's the one thing I can think of that is essentially impossible to improvise. The last thing you'll need is some kind of proximal traction point. In this case, yet again, just a Fastex buckle with some flat webbing that you could easily harvest off of your packs and such. Uh, one tip, use the victim's pack, not yours. If you're like me, you're tired of waiting, so let's build this thing. This will be the proximal component of the splint. And in this case, again, it's just a strap. There are a million ways to do this. So if you see something different, that's fine. Um, we're just going under. You don't even have to move for me, Ari. Let's pretend that she has broken femur. She's not going to be doing a lot of moving. And I'm going to try to position this up under her shorts, like so. And then the thing that most people want to do is they like to make things look pretty. So they'll tighten this. But we don't want to tighten it too much because we actually want to apply the traction off the point of her hip right here. So notice I'm leaving the tr traction quite loose. Um, when you do this on a male, usually it's pretty comfortable. There are times where you can accidentally include their huevos and you'll just try to reposition that if you can. In this case, uh, Ari happens to be conscious. How's that feel right there? I'm not hurting you right there. Okay. One of the most varied aspects of the femoral traction splint is the ankle hitch. I'll show you how I put it on. One point I'd really like to make is that in the real world, if I was working on Ari, I would have one person dedicated to just making sure that she's comfortable. Somebody up at her head that can ask her if the sun's too bright, if she's getting hot, you know, if what I'm doing is hurting her, etc. So always it's patient first, patient first. And if you've got the personnel, put somebody up at her head. For today's demo, I'm just doing this by myself. 
We're going to take this webbing and turn it into an ankle hitch. Of note, this is climbing webbing, sometimes called tubular webbing, because you can see it forms a tube. To make a loop out of this kind of webbing, you can tie a knot that's called a web knot or a ring band, sometimes referred to as a water knot. It's super simple. You just take the webbing, put an overhand knot on one end. If you were using this for climbing, you'd leave a long tail. But for an ankle hitch, I don't care. I'm going to pull tail through on the other side and simply follow it back through. And you've got a beautiful symmetric web knot or water knot or ring band. You don't always have to make a hitch out of webbing. Uh, if Ari was nice enough to have come today with a nice pair of hiking shoes, we could just take a knife and literally stab a little slit just over the sole, obviously after having taken this off of her foot so as not to induce further trauma. And uh, we could simply thread some webbing through that slit and literally pull traction off of a hiking boot. It's not a bad improvised technique. Today Ari's got some river shoes on because we're on a river and uh, you know this might work. I could maybe just put the strap literally over her sole and pull traction just off her sandal. The problem is it's going to be a lot of pressure on her foot. If I was going to do that with these sandals I would probably put on a bunch of pairs of socks or figure out a way to pad her foot before putting a bunch of traction on that. But in a pinch, I could pull traction off that. But this is no ordinary sandal. This isn't like a pair of flip-flops. This is a high-end river sandal that really distributes forces pretty well around her foot. Today, we'll just go ahead and take Ari's sandal off and pretend that She's just got flip-flops or no shoes at all and just start from scratch. Now, I know I keep repeating myself, but it's really important to pad. I would never put this kind of webbing right against Ari's skin. But again, just for this demo, I don't want all this padding to get in the way, but I would use Ensolite, maybe a piece of Sam Splint, maybe a bunch of pairs of socks, uh, whatever I have. We're going to start by taking the webbing, sliding it under her ankle, and you notice that the knot is hanging out on one side. We'll take the other piece and literally just stick it over her ankle. Notice the knot sticking the other direction. So I'm going to take this knot and stick it through this loop. I'm going to take this knot and stick it through this loop. And lo and behold, we end up with this really nice, fairly ergonomic ankle hitch. And again, I would use this with padding. You notice I pulled it nicely so that I'm pulling below both of her malleoli, her ankle bones. And uh, notice I'm pulling inline traction with her femur. But I could slide this up like this, and that would be a great example of bad inline traction. I'm not pulling traction in line with her femur. You really want to get these situated below her ankle bones on both sides. You can tie this off just by tying any kind of granny or square knot, it really doesn't matter. But sometimes people want to tie the knot way out here. The problem with that is then we have to apply our traction that much further out. So of course it makes sense to bring this whole traction system as close to Ari's foot as possible. So I'm really going to bring it in like this because the smaller we can make this, the better and I'll put an extra knot in for good luck. And again, we're not pulling very much weight. It really doesn't matter what kind of knot you tie, just something to be able to pull our traction against. So let's go ahead and try to apply our splint to that proximal anchor point. Now we're going to take the paddle and we're literally going to push it into this proximal strap. And notice that Although I'm going to duct tape this in a sec, the actual traction is against the strap, not against the duct tape. So I'm going to just put some tape here to hold that strap on. Now I'll take a little bit of duct tape. And 
I'll literally just tape the strap in place, which will help to keep it from flying off during transport. I'm just doing the same thing on the back side. Now, if you're thinking that that doesn't look very pretty, I would agree with you, but we can push quite a bit of traction. We're pushing against the strap. The tape is just to keep the strap from sliding out of place. Now we're going to put the distal traction point on. You could just use a small loop of webbing or line, cord. Uh, I'm going to use a carabiner just because it looks good. At this point, I'm going to just go ahead and tape this on. Again, I'm just using the duct tape to stabilize the carabiner. The actual traction is going to be off the end of the paddle. So again, I really want to accentuate that the pressure, the forces here, are off the carabiner and the paddle, not off the duct tape. The duct tape just keeping everything from sliding. The amount of traction you put on is variable, of course. Uh, I've had the pleasure of putting a lot of commercial traction splints on that have little strain gauges, so I know what 10 pounds, 15 pounds, 20 pounds feels like. But a couple things you can do. It'll say in some medical books, you just continue to put traction on until the patient's more comfortable. But I have yet to put on a traction splint on a patient with a fractured femur where they go, ah, oh, that's just perfect, that feels really good. But patients do become more comfortable when you put traction on. Today, Ari was nice enough to come in with both of her legs. And so I can pull traction on this leg until it's elongated via traction to about the length of her other leg. And lastly, I can just put on what feels to me to be about 10% of her body weight. And I'll admit, that's a hard thing. Now, 10% of a 100 pound person, we're talking about 10 pounds, 150 pound person, about 15 pounds, never more than 20 pounds, even on a huge person. And uh, different orthopedic surgeons will have different ideas about this. But I usually shoot for about 15 pounds. Bottom line is it's not a ton of traction. It just feels nice and snug, but it's not like you're putting a come along on and turning her into Stretch Armstrong. So this is my little strap. It's got a Fastex buckle on it. I'm going to use for her final traction. And again, I really like this system more than a Spanish windlass that you'll see in some medical manuals and military manuals and old first aid books. So I'm just taking the buckle I'm simply going to stick it through the hitch. I'm going to thread the other side through the carabiner. Again, Kaylee would be holding continuous traction on the patient the whole time. So Kaylee and I would just be transferring manual traction onto mechanical traction. In this case, I'm actually pulling the traction. And uh, so let's pretend that Kaylee's still pulling the manual traction and I'm simply going to meet Kaylee's traction with traction off the Fastex buckle. And now she has about 15 pounds of traction. In the real world it would have been a transfer and she'd be well padded here. Another thing we can do at the end is, Kaylee can you help me just lift her leg up a ways. This won't hurt very much because she's already in traction and support her calf here, get her up. And we can take an ace wrap like this, just wrap it around her leg gently. Her fracture's probably right in there. So I'm not putting a lot of pressure here. I'm just wrapping the whole thing to give her a little bit of support during transport. This is not in any way essential. And then the last thing I'll do is just a little duct tape there or something, not circumferentially, just a nice loose wrap. Even though she's in traction, Patients are much more comfortable when they're put into a little bit of flexion at the knee. So I always try to stick something under a patient's knee so that they're not in full extension for the entire transport. So that could be a roll of insulite, it could be some fleece, whatever. It's just really hard on your knee to be extended for many, many hours.
last thing that I would do, truly the last thing here is, I would probably put Ari into some kind of a buddy or dynamic splint, putting both of her legs together. If I had some fleece or sleeping bag, I might put it between her legs. Then I would pad a strap like this, and I would put it around her ankles. Again, I want to accentuate that I would not use a strap like this without padding. So I'd have fleece and slide around her ankles, and I'd put something like this on. And the question is, why? Again, with fleece between your legs, something like this. And the reason I like to do that is because although this traction splint is pulling traction, it's not stabilizing her in rotation. So with this off on a long ambulance ride, helicopter flight, with this off, she's gonna be doing this. And if she's got a fractured femur, even though it's being put in traction, we're doing nothing about rotation.